Welcome to Rapid Review for PLAB with MindMaps. I am Dr. Rahil working as emergency physician in the UK for many years. Through this series, my aim is to help doctors preparing for PLAB or similar examinations and to make this daunting process a fun and interesting activity. There's no doubt that the knowledge gained would help to make the right diagnosis and initiate right treatment in clinical practice. I have mapped this presentation to the blueprint for PLAP from GMC and today we will be focusing on palpitations, arrhythmias of any cause. Today I would focus on tachycardia. I will publish another video on bloody arrhythmias very soon. So let's start with tachycardia which is defined as heart rate more than 100 beats per minute. This guidance is based on advanced life support from European Resuscitation Council. The first step in the management is to assess whether the patient is stable or unstable. Patients are considered unstable if they have any of the life-threatening features which are number one, shock defined as systolic blood pressure less than 90 mmHg, number two, history of syncope or loss of consciousness, Number three, evidence of myocardial ischemia or infarction on the ECG. And number four, presence of severe heart failure or pulmonary edema on clinical examination. Unstable patients should be treated with cardioversion irrespective of the type of tachyarrhythmias. If the patients are stable, then we can proceed to assess whether they have broad or narrow complex tachycardia which are again subdivided into various categories based on the rhythm, whether regular or irregular. We are going to discuss these conditions in detail later in the presentation, but first, let's start with a case scenario. Here we have 66-year-old man brought to the emergency department with history of palpitations and dizziness. There was no history of chest pain, shortness of breath or collapse. His past medical history included ischemic heart disease and hypertension. The striking feature on examination is the heart rate of 160 beats per minute. Blood pressure is on the lower side and no evidence of heart failure. Please pause the video to look at the ECG and answer the next question. And the question is, what is the diagnosis based on ECG? Please pause the video and take your time to go through the choices. The correct answer is number 3 ventricular tachycardia. If you are not sure why this is the right answer, don't worry as I will discuss everything in detail later. Let's go to the next question. The next question is what is the next step in the management? Please pause the video to go through the options. The correct answer is Again, the third option, which is the amiodrone 300 mg IV. To find out why this is the right answer, let's learn the broad complex tachycardia in some detail. As discussed earlier, broad complex tachycardias can be further subdivided into regular and irregular. Ventricular tachycardia is an example of regular broad complex tachycardia. Ventricular tachycardia or VT is defined as broad complex tachycardia with QRS complex duration 120 milliseconds or more which correspond to three or more small squares on ECG and the heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute and regular rhythm. It is called sustained if the duration is 30 seconds or more. Let's look at the ECG of ventricular tachycardia again. Here I am going with the assumption that you have some basic knowledge on the ECG interpretation. To meet the definition of ventricular tachycardia or VT, there should be broad QRS complexes. And here they appear to be 6 or 7 small squares wide. The second criteria is the heart rate should be more than 100 beats per minute with regular rhythm. Just scanning the ECG, heart rate appears to be quite fast. These days, most ECGs come with the heart rate already printed on mach by machine. But if you want to calculate heart rate, 
you need to divide 300 by number of big squares. In this ECG, there are about 1.5 big squares between two QRS complexes, which equates to 200 beats per minute. And this is very close to 197 beats per minute calculated by the machine. Another criteria is AV dissociation, which means there is no, no relationship between P wave and QRS complexes. The fourth feature is concordance of QRS complexes in chest leads. This means that all QRS complexes have either positive or negative directions or deflection in chest leads, which is V1 to V6. The features of ventricular tachycardia are lack of right bundle branch block or left bundle branch block patterns and presence of capture or fusion beats, which are the topics of discussion in other videos. Now coming to the causes, there are many conditions which can trigger ventricular tachycardia, but the common causes are ischemic heart disease, cardiomyopathies, channelopathies like long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome, etc. It can also be idiopathic. Management depends whether patient is stable or unstable. To go through the features of instability again, there are presence of systolic blood pressure less than 90, history of loss of consciousness, evidence of ischemia or infarction, presence of severe heart failure or pulmonary edema. All these patients should be treated with cardioversion. For biphasic defibrillators, the choice of energy is 150 joules and if unsuccessful, 200 joules for subsequent shocks. For monophasic defibrillators, the choice of energy is 200 joules and if unsuccessful, 360 joules for subsequent shocks. Hemodynamically stable patients should be treated with amiodrone 300 mg over 1 hour followed by 900 mg infusion over 24 hours. Alternative treatment include lidocaine 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram given as a single bolus dose. Now coming to the second category of white complex tachycardia with irregular rhythm. Conditions include polymorphic VT and ventricular fibrillation or VF. VF is one of the cardiac arrest rhythms and will be discussed in a separate topic. Coming to polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, it is characterized by changing QRS patterns and it appears as if the QRS complexes are twisted on their own axis. Myocardial ischemia or infarction is the commonest cause. It can resolve spontaneously or deteriorate into ventricular fibrillation or cardiac arrest. This rhythm is treated with cardioversion. One specific form of polymorphic VT is called tosor dupont and it is seen in the context of prolonged QT interval. This condition is treated with magnesium sulfate, 2 grams intravenously given over 10 to 20 minutes. This brings us to the end of broad complex tachycardia. For discussion of narrow complex tachycardia and the summary of tachyarrhythmias with mind maps, please watch the second part of this presentation. You will find the link in the description of this video. I really hope you found this presentation helpful. Till next time, take care and goodbye.